Welcome everybody to our Amud Yomi Shio. We're going to learn today about the life of Rabba, the life and death of the Amoira called Rabba. How did he die? And so many interesting facts we're going to see today, Bezos Hashem. Shir is Le'ilu Nishmas, my father, of Imoir Menachem Ben Akiva, Rusba Shalom, Sobas Moshe, and Yeresha Bas, and Chonon Yitzchok, and Le'refuas, David Ben Mazal, David Ben Golda, Le'refuas Chaim Ben Sete, Le'refuas Nama Bas, Nama Bas Rochel Rama, Le'refuas Pnina Chaim Bas Yol Rochel, Le'refuas my aunt, Aviva Bas Dvoiro. She still needs Refu, Aviva Bas Dvoiro. Welcome to everybody here and everybody on YouTube and tour anytime. Rebbe Barbanoson, yeah, two lines. We we learned yesterday before we talk about Rebbe, and we learned yesterday that each and every generation has different rabbonim, different leaders, and it's all decided from the time of Odom Arisho and Hashem showed Odom Arisho in. Yeah, the list, the safer of yeah, each and every the 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 style or even the names, yeah, of each and every rov and leader of each generation. And there it says that Shmuel is not supposed to get smicha. Shmuel was a Shmuel, tremendous Talmud Chacham. Yeah, he was a healer, a doctor, and above all, a dayan and Rosh Hashiva, everything. But he was not a rov with a smicha. He never passed good when it came to question of you know, let's say nida. Or kashrus. That was his his role in life was this and not that. That's the way it goes. Not every rabbi yes knows all the questions, right? Different like doctors, you have an eye doctor and you have an ear doctor. I'm saying each one has his own field of expertise. So the same thing is where Rabonim comes the Gemara and continues in the same vein. Rabbi Rabnoson Soif Mishnah, the latest Tanoim who concluded the Mishnah are Rabbi, Rabbi Rabbi Yudha Nosi, Rabbi Akodesh, <coughs> Rabbi Noson, yeah, because we all know that Rabbi is the one that actually edited the Mishnah. Up until then, all the members of the Mishnah, all the statements of the Mishnah were like many, many documents. You know, all of the a person has many, many documents in his computer, not at all connected. <clears throat> right? And he has to compile them into one coherent thing. Lahavdil <clears throat> Rebbe, yeah, in his days, each Tana would just know what his what his Rebbein told him, but each one has his own piece of information. There was no one thing that united, that actually gelled everything together. Until Rebbe came and Rebbe edited the Mishnah properly with six orders <clears throat> and the nice, beautiful Mishnah is clear that we have today. Ah, oh, welcome back. Rabbi Nelson was the same generation of Ashe Veravina. It's not Rav Ashi, it's Rav Ashe. Of Ashe Veravina, Soif Hoiro. What does it mean? Rav Ashe and Ravina, they were the editor of the Gemara. Soif Hoiro means they were the latest Amoiroim. Rav Ashe Veravina, they were the ones who actually compiled all the statements of the Gemara. What Rebbe did to the Mishnah, they did to the Gemara. They actually took all the many, many different statements and questions and many, also Rashi ends, Rashi points out, a lot of loose ends, yeah, when you learn the, the, the Mishnah and the Gemara, the beginning of the Gemara doesn't always tell you the final story. Many times, Ravina and Ravashi added more things to make everything make sense. And Ravina and Ravashi, they are the ones who actually, I think the Gemara, I read once, has like two or three editions, even in the times of the Gemara. Rabashi Veravina, the Kilo added another edition on top of the after the first one. So they really did the beautiful job. Can you imagine the entire Gemara? <laughs> That's some kind of work, yeah? So many statements, much more than the Mishnah, and they managed that. Deva Vamudalef. Deva Vamudalef, the three lines from the top. Besimonoch. How do you know that Ravina Veravashi, which posuk in Tanakh tells you a remez, an illusion, that they were the ones who finished off the job? It says, Ad ovoi el mikdo shei kel, until I come to mikdo shei kel, until I come to the, the, the sanctuaries of Hashem, avina la harisom. Then I will understand, yeah, what happens at the end. What does that mean? It's really just a rhyme. Ad ovoi el mikdo shei. Mikdo shei is what? Alludes to rav ashei. Mikdo shei rhymes with ashei. Avina rhymes with ravina. Le'acharisom, they are the acharon, they are the last ones. It's just a postuk to rhyme with the names of Ashe and Ravina to tell you also Avina, they understood. They actually chapped the whole picture together. They compiled the entire Gemara. Amar of Kana, oh, now we're going to start with the main topic of today, the life and death, mainly death actually, of Rabbah. Amar of Kana, 
אשתיילי רב חמא, רב חמא בר ברטי דחסה, רב חמא the son of the daughter, excuse me, בר ברטי the son of the son of חסה, yeah, רב כהנא, yeah, is the one who told, excuse me, רב חמא בר ברטי, בר, the son, the grandson of חסה, he told the following to רב כהנא. What did he tell Rav Kahana? Well, what's the story told him? Rabbi Bar Nachmaini. Rabbi Bar Nachmaini, that's the Rabbi which we always know. Who was Rabbi? Rabbi was Rosh Hashiva. Rabbi was a friend and rival at the same time of Rav Yosef. Rabbi and Rav Yosef are mentioned many, many times. Rabbi was the one who was the mentor of Rova and Abaye. Rabbi, he, uh, he adopted Abaye. Abaye was an orphan. And Nachmaini, by the way, was the real name of Abaye. Abai sometimes calls Nachmeni, yeah, Shabbos Ayin Dalet Domudalet, yeah, yeah, and some other places, yeah, Shapir Omar Nachmeni, yeah, Rabbi Bar Nachmeni, Rabbi's father was called Nachmeni, or Nachmani, and that's why he called his adopted son Nachmani after him. So what about Rabbi Bar Nachmeni? Agav Shamda Nach Nafshe, because of the Shmad, because of the bad decrees of the Malchus, that's why he died. In other words, we're going to see later there was some kind of mystery around the death of Rabba, mystery enveloping his death. So he says, I know that the real reason why he was Nifter because, was because of fear of the government, fear of the cruel government yeah, that there was then, back then, and that's why. Why? What was, the, what was so bad? What was the story? Let's start the story. Achlu Bekutza, it started like every time, it started with Loshan Hora. They snitched on him. Yeah, they basically denounced him, Bey Malka, to the king. What bad did they say about Rabba to the king? They said, Omu, they said, There's one man amongst the Jewish people, the Kamevatel Tresar, or Tlesar, Al Tegavrim Yisrael. In other words, you should know that there's this uh, Jewish man, and he causes 12,000, or some say 13,000 Jews from the people from the Jewish nation, He's mevatel and he stops them from working twice a year. Yarcha bekaita v'yarcha besitva. One month in the summer, one month in the winter, and mikarga de malka, which means the problem of them not working two months is that, what do you mean he caused them not to work for two months? He actually, Rabbi was one who initiated, or I'm not sure he was the first one who initiated it. He is the one who, who used to run Yarchikala. The day of Yachikala that exists still today, that working people from all over, they do it in England, in Israel, yeah, in America, in America, yeah, they do Yachikala. So back then, Yachikala was in the month of Tishrei, the month of Nisan. Bye, darling, I don't have to clean for Pesach. Month of Nisan, I'm going to Yeshiva to learn with my old friends in Gateshead, in Amir. So back then, Rabba was the one who would initiate and encourage the idea of all working people coming twice a year to learn. Now, the government didn't like it. Why? Because they would knock on the door of those people asking for money from Karga de Malka. What's Karga de Malka? The king's charges. Karga, charge. In other words, taxes. People would come, the government officials would come, knock on the door of Mr. Jewish man, ask his wife, where is he? We want to collect the taxes. And he wouldn't be home. Yeah, And then they would miss him that month. That month, I guess, they didn't follow through or they didn't have internet to send him emails, whatever. Yeah. Lamaisa. If they missed the, 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 the taxes of those two months, and the government obviously didn't like it. Yeah, why are these people learning Torah? They should be working. They should be giving more taxes. Nothing's new. Then what happens? They didn't like that idea. Shadru Fristika de Malka Batre. They sent after him a Fristika de Malka, a shliach from the king, basically a policeman, somebody to catch him. Yeah, they sent him a messenger. That is going to put him straight, is going to come and, I don't know, threaten him, put him to death potentially, deal with him. Yeah, they brought the policeman to bring him to, to the government offices, to the police. And then, Veloy Ashkeche couldn't find him. The, that policeman, that messenger didn't find Rabba. So, what did Rabba do? Orak, the Ozil, mi Pumpedisa le Akra. Rabba Orak, Rabba ran away, defected, and ran away from Pumpedisa. That's where his yeshiva was. Le Akra, to another town called Akra, and then the policemen kept chasing him from place to place, like the police today. Yeah, many times. Yeah, he, they were hot on his heels. Me Akra le Agma. From Akra, he would run to another place called Agma. Me Agma, he ran away to Shechin, and then Me Shechin, he ran away to Tsarifa, and then Me Tsarifa le Eina Demayim. Yeah, Eina Demayim or Eina Demaya. 
The kids are all over. That's Yisurim, terrible Yisurim. He's always on the run, always on the go. Hashem Yishmol, yeah? And then, Umeina Demayin Lukum Pedisa. He did something smart. He came back to Pum Pedisa, yeah? Maybe then the government wouldn't, wouldn't imagine that he would actually run to the lion's den. He went back to Pum Pedisa. There, Pum Pedisa. What happened in Pum Pedisa? Ashkechei. Okay. In Pum Pedisa, he found him. The policeman found Rabba, but it wasn't so simple. It's not like the met in the middle of the street. Now the Gemara is going to elaborate on how exactly is it that he found the police guy, the detective. How do you know that he found Rabba? What exactly happened? Ikla Fristika de Malka Lau Ishpiza de Rabba. In other words, that Fristika de Malka came, he came to stay by the same hosting place, Ushpiza, by the same host with Rabba, hotel, motel, a private house, BNB. Wherever that was, wherever Rabbi stayed, yeah, in, in Pumpedisa, Hilton, Sheraton, wherever it was, the, that guy, the policeman, came across, came about to the same place, came to the same place, chanced upon the same place. What did they do over there? Karivu, Tacha, Kamei. What's Tacha? A table. The host bought a table, you know, the way it used to be back then. Each person would sit on a, would lie on a divan, on a couch, on a sofa, whatever it was. And there was a small table, unless you're very poor. And there was a small table with food and drinks, yeah, like a small table that's brought individually to each person. They did not sit and eat together, everyone at the same table. Yeah, each one had his own bed with a small table. All the comics of the children are wrong. I'm sorry, you had to describe times of Gemara. Yeah, okay, let's just, yeah, my, my, my soapbox moment. Then the kids are, Kirivu Tacha Kamei. They brought the, the traditional small table in front of him, of the government guy, the cover, the government man is here, Vashku Trey Kasi, and they gave him to drink, they offered him drink, two cups of wine of whatever, the important is, the number was two, the two cups of whatever, and then they took away the table, meaning that those two cups were like a set of two cups, like that's what you get to drink, and that's it, unless you order another one, another drink, but there was like a drink, given in two cups. Now, that was bad news. Why? Because the Gemara in, in Psochim, in Arvi Psochim, the Gemara over there, yeah, around Kuf uh, Yud area, the Gemara over there says that uh, today, not supposed to be Makpid, but back then there was a big issue that if you do something twice, or even any other even number, the Shadim can come. It's a very bad thing because somehow the bad spirits some kind of bad spirits can come. That's a very famous thing from Psochim. Some people may be makpid today, but it's not. They, no, they say today, don't have to be makpid unless you are maybe, maybe a former than me. Well, one second, one second, please. One second, please. Let, let's control ourselves. Even, why does the Gemara ask the question? The Gemara even has a question about Dalit Koises. How can we have Dalit Koises? It's an even number. So to drink an even uh, um, a number, even amount of cups, is a bad thing, or to do something twice. The Gemara talks about, I don't know, to doing whatever twice and not an uneven number. An even number is a bad thing. I think they say even means like the, the shade, I think, if I remember correctly, the bad spirits wants to be like the one the, to, to be machria, to be the, to tilt the, the, and as we have something even, another power wants to come and tilt the scale. Yeah, like to, to balance it one way or the other, to be the third one. So that's why, maybe. The kids are, it's a problem, or used to be a problem, to drink two cups. I'll be with you soon. I promise you'll listen to all the questions. One second. Really, the shadim, the bad spirits, affected the government guy. Oh, good for him. And his face turned backwards. I'm not sure what he means, how bad that was. Maybe a whole, uh, I don't know, caught his neck or maybe something more supernatural. Something bad happened that somehow his face went backwards in some distorted way. And that was bad news. And Amrulay. They said to him, to Rabbi, now Rabbi was there. He was a wise man. He was the Amoira. My Nabi lay. What are we going to do to him? Gavra de Malka. <gasps> In our hotel, Gavra de Malka. This is a man from the government. We don't want to mess up yet. We did something wrong. They didn't even know what was wrong. They didn't know about the Zugois business, about not serving double, apparently. Oy vay vay. All of a sudden, he's stuck. You know, the KGB is going to come after us. We are the ones, you know, in charge of something bad happening to a government official right by us. So, Omar Lehu, Rabbi told them, Give him another table, Very good. Give him one more cup to drink. Have him drink one more cup to imbalance it, to make it an odd number. 
and then take away the table so you won't drink anymore. The final number should be three, and that would somehow balance it the right way or imbalance it. And then he'll be well, he'll be healed. That's what they did to him. And in other words, Rabbi himself helped his own enemy by what? Giving him the third cup or having them give him the third cup. And that's why the government official was back to life. Questions and comments? Yes. Thank you for the correction, people. The government here is not the Roman government. And if I said so, I am sorry. It's a Persian government. They're not better. And Khinami, yeah, they're not nice people. And they were running after Rabba just for Texas. Oh, what a surprise. Let's go. Let's continue. So now Rabba, very altruistically, I'm sorry. Ooh. So Rabba was in this hotel and he saved the life of who? Of the one who's chasing him. Now, he only did that to help the hotel manager, yeah, because the hotel management were very nervous that the government official, you know, messed up in their own house, yeah, in their own place. So Rabba was very nice to them. Now, Omar, now comes the government official, and he realized, says the Marshal, that that smart man who knows so much and is so prominent and so people look up to him must be who? Must be Mr. Wanted Dead or Alive. Must be that my man is here. But now the government official, who may have been a goy, still has some kind of level of hakaras hatov. He has some kind of gratitude. He's a bit stuck, right? On one hand, he wants to kill Rabba because that's the job. He's a hitman. On the other hand, he feels bad punishing the man who just saved his life, yeah, or his sanity. So, uh, Meida Omar says the government guy, says the policeman, we are in Daf Pevovo Mudalef, yeah? We are now a few lines before the end of the narrow lines, yeah? You have the narrow lines and the wide lines. Line starts with the word Meida Yadana, Meida, not Meidale, Meida. Omar, Meida Yadana, I surely know, I surely know, Meida Yadana, the Gavra de Gabaina, Hoho. I know that the man, that I'm looking for the Kabaina, the man I'm searching is here, must be is here. In other words, he couldn't see Rabba while everything was taking place because his face was backwards. He could somehow figure out from what people were saying, oh, that great Rabbi, give us advice. Yeah, that business with the two cops made him think that smart man people, the Jewish people are looking up to, must be, this is probably him, but he couldn't find him physically. Bochi Shabasri, he starts searching for him all over the hotel. No, all the elevators going up and down to the 10th floor, whatever. Yeah. Then he was smaller. He looked all over for him. What's bachish? Like livchosh, to, to mix. In other words, to stir. He looked all over and searched all over for him. He found him. At the end, he found Rabbi Omar. So now, says the government official, I'm kind of stuck. I have a moral dilemma. Azil Nameho, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I'm going away from you, says the government official. And I'm not directly framing you or giving you to the hands of the police. I'm not. However, if they're going to kill me, let's say the person on top of me says the policeman, let's say he's going to kill me. He says, you either tell me where Rabbi is or I kill you. Wow. I'll give you my son Efesh and I will not tell them where you are. You saved my life. I'm a man of honor. And even if they kill me, I will not tell them your whereabouts. However, the ina gidim in agdin lay, oh, but if they would torture me, that's much harder. Yeah, to withstand torture of a few days is much, much harder than a shot in the head, right? In a gidnam and nagdinli, if they hit me, if they start, you know, KGB, Gestapo, Lo Leinu, Megalina, I would I will tell them where you are. I can't stand Yisurim of the body, torture, that I would not do. That I, I, I will have to tell them where you are. Asiu Lekame, they brought him in front of him. In other words, he wasn't speaking directly to Rabba. It's not so clear here when you see the Mephoshim. Then they brought Rabbi in front of him. So I don't know, he found him, then they brought him in front of him. It's not so clear if where was Rabbi at the time, because it says he found him already. Then he made that statement, and then Imamish confronted Rabbi. He, he put him into a dark room, the Talke Lebava Be'anpe, and he closed the door. In other words, he left and he closed Rabbi in a dark room. Yeah, one of the hotels in the room, yeah. He closed him, shut off the light, whatever, yeah, closed him in a dark room. It's really, really not simple, and I'm being honest with you. I don't know why he did it. I looked really all over the Mephoshim. It's not so clear why, what kind of solution 
that is. I saw one of the Mepharshim today, like uh, a guy like me, and he says that was like a temporary solution. He, for now, you know, I'm going away. I don't know if I'll be tortured or dead or this and that. He, Kilo, meanwhile, put him in a place where Rabba can, for now, not run away. He doesn't want Rabba to be seen in the street. That also makes sense, yeah? That's for sure. He doesn't want to go back to the governor and say, I didn't find him. And then they'll see Rabba, you know, whistling down the lane. Maybe that's why. I'm not billing for censure. I'm being honest. I don't know why he closed the door in the dark room. Punkt. Whatever. Maybe he could tell the government, you know, I killed him. It's almost like death to put someone in a dark room. Azar Givain. Azar Givain. That's what happened. Rabba is in a dark room now. The government official is outside hoping that his, you know, his commanders, his, you know, uh, executives won't give him a hard time. And that's what we're holding right now. Um, give me one second. Bo Rachmi, Rabba is Rabba. He can talk to Kajbok. We all can, but Rabba even more. Bo Rachmi, Rabba est Rachamim from Hashem, Rabba Davent, Porak Ashisa, and the wall fell down like in Jericho. In other words, the wall of the room collapsed because of Rabba's Davening. And then Orak, the Ozil Agma, he ran away to the Agma, to no man's land, to the grazing area, to the field, to the meadow. To the place where people are just not around, that's a much safer place, yeah? Like in the Holocaust, the partisans were in the forest, yeah, far away from the city. Okay, questions? One of the questions says, listen to this, Rabbi said when he was in a dark room, quite stuck and, you know, down and out in a dark room in solitary confinement, Lolenu, he says, I don't be so mechalanes. <laughs> then he daven and the, and the wall fell. Mashma, if you daven and the nace happens, that's not called Tzomei Chala Get what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Davening is nature. You daven to Hashem, Hashem should save him. That's a natural thing to do. Yeah, he didn't try, you know, breaking into the X's. Yeah, he didn't say, you know, Stam, Hashem will do me an S. He davened and something would happen and then it happened. That's, an, that, that's the right thing to do. And then he went to the Agam. As, let's remind everybody, we are actually now telling the story of Rabba's death. Yeah, and the question is how that works. What did you do in the Agam? In the Agam, and here uh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of Mephoshim, Lisa Gadita, and too much. I'll just say what I, what I, the bit that I, that there's enough time to say. Ozila Agma. The Agma is a place where nobody's there. Ask any breast lover. It's Boydedus. Yeah, he was away from anybody else, everybody else. He doesn't think he can ever go back home. The government is after him. A bit like Kabshim Nabar Yoichai, in a way. He's completely a Heiliga Moir or Rabbah after Yisurim of running away, after establishing, you know, a Koyal Balabatim, Yachikala. What a great man. What does he do in the Agma? Ava Yosif Agirda de Dikula. He sat on the stump of the palm tree of the Dekel, the Kagolis, and he learned. <laughs> Imagine, he sat and learned. What else? Yeah. And as he was sitting and learning, the Mephoshim now say his level was so high, he was sitting and learning all the studies of Torah in such environment of no distraction whatsoever, he started to see real visions of what's going on in Shemaim. He could see now the Torah is now connected between Eretz and Shemaim. He could see the Sugya, the Kutzil Abdullah video, what's happening right now in Yeshiva Shlomala, what's the Sugya they learn in up there in the real Yeshiva in Shemaim. And he could see that. They saw that there's an argument in Yeshiva Shalmala, first wide line. What's the argument? In Baharis could in Ches Tsaras, the halachas of Tsaras. What's halachas of Tsaras? In Baharis Kudemis Lisear Lovon Tome. If Baharis, what's a Baharis? Let's say a person has a white, white spot in his body, which is one of the four shades of white described in the Mishnah. Yeah, like the Sida Hecha, like Tzema Alovan, like, like white wool, or like the membrane of a, of a, of an egg, like a snow, like the, like the plaster of the Hechal. You see one of those shades, and the size is what? The size is Kegris, which is about 17 to 19, 20 centimeters, Mechloikis. That's it, you show your Rav, the Kesem of a wife, Nida. Millimeters, I said? Millimeters. Okay, millimeters, thank you for being on your toes. And I said Persian stuff. Okay, 17 or to 19 millimeters. No, not centimeters, no. So that is a potentially metame. The coin comes and the coin says, okay, let's see what happens in a week's time. If in a week's time, one of three things happen, 
Yeah, one of the things we're going to concentrate now is there's white hair that grew inside that white, you know, grease size uh, stain on the on the skin. If there's white hair, then it's completely tome. Completely tome means not only as regular to Saras, is called mitzora muchlat. Oy, oy, oy. He now has to be in confinement even more, and then he has to bring all the korbanos, the birds, shaving, another week shaving, bringing all the korbanos, the chula, the whole story. If there's no white hair, then we wait another week and see what happens. So now, if the white spot was there before the white hair, then he's tome, stronger level of tuma. What happens if the guy, yeah, on his hand, let's say, he has one white hair amongst the other, let's say, black hairs, and afterwards came the white circle around the hair, so then he's tall, I mean, not completely tall, he's not as tome. Yeah, he's tall. Yeah, that's not, it doesn't make him more tome of Mitzor Muzgar. Oh, very nice. Sothic, oh, a guy comes and he didn't really follow through so much. And for some reason, yeah, let's say the stain started halfway through another half. It's a doubt. We don't know chronologically what happened first. Was it was the first hair before the, the ketem, or was the stain there before the hair? We don't know which came first. It's a doubt. What do you do? Is it Tome or Tahor? There's an argument between Hashem, is a man the Omer called the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and he says, Tahor, the cool of the Reki Amri Tome. Everybody else in Yeshiva Shamala, all the Malachim, all the Talmud Chachamim, everyone, they all say Tome. Argument, Hashem and everybody else in Yeshiva the Reki Interesting. So now they're asking him before Shim, what do you mean, Achor Rabim Latais? I think the Marsha himself says, or one of the others, I saw so many, I don't remember. Yeah, he says that Kudrochu Rochu keeps halacha. Rochu is from. So in halacha we say what? Achor Rabim Latais, you go with the majority. But then he answers, yeah, but it's a Kudrochu. Rochu. <laughs> The quality, Akash Baruch, that's Rav Minyan, that's Rav Binyan. The quality, Akash Baruch, is not just one opinion. He's, he's God, you know. What? He's a Kazok and Mufla, very good, uh, much more. Yeah. In other words, so we have your question of quality, Akash Baruch Hu, versus quantity, everybody else up there. So what do you do? The Amri, Man Noichach, who's going to really prove us right or wrong? Who will decide between Akash Baruch Hu and everybody else? Nechach Rabbi Bar Rabbi Vanachmeni, he'll decide who's right. Yeah, who to pass him like, Kukhosh or everybody else? Why is Rabbi Vanachmeni the one chosen to be the arbitrator, the go between, the mediator in the story? Can you imagine? Rabbi Vanachmeni was not an arrogant person. He knew his value. And he says, I'm number one in Egoim, I'm number one in Olos. I just, I am expert number one in the area. What can you do? You know? Yeah. So therefore, because it's number one, he's the one to decide. Because we know also there's a concept called Loi Shamaimi. You need a human being to decide. So Kosh and Yeshiva Shamala are, are scary to even mention the name. But Halacha Lamaisa, in our earthly world, yeah, we have to have the decision of a Talmud Chochem. Shadru Shlicha Basri. <laughs> they sent a Shaliach, not the Persian official, they sent a messenger after him to bring him up there to decide, meaning to die. Yeah, to actually, yeah, I would say maybe post, maybe, yeah, you could, yeah, it was death. I don't know why they do some, you know, how do you call it, post-death experience, near-death experience, and then come back down. I don't know, the solution wasn't offered, but Lamai said they sent a shaliach to bring him upstairs to decide between a Kosh and Yeshiva Shalmala. Lo have a matzi malachamavis lemikravle. Baal Chamavis, which naturally would be the shaliach to take people, to bring people, what? Volunteered for the job. The Baal Chamavis says, oh, I'm on. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah, so very good. Baal Chamavis could not touch him. Lo have a matzah Baal Chamavis lemikravli. Couldn't get near Rabba. Why? But the lo have a kaposik pume migil say, because his mouth never stopped learning. Rabba was learning, learning, learning. Toiro is chaim. And Chaim is Torah. When the person learns, 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 blah, 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 he's like, you know, uh, it, the Mavis cannot touch him. Same words are used by who? A trip to Switzerland. Joking. Yeah, Alavai, Alavai, Alavai. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are, yeah, David the Melech. You know when King David died? Yeah. So also, it was Shabbos afternoon. And then they were supposed to bring him to Shemaim. The Malachamovis couldn't touch him. 
because there's learning all the time. Same words exactly. Yeah, and then Malachim obviously rattled the the sway, the, the tree, the rattled the, 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 the leaves, and then David the Melech, the leaves, the leaves, yeah. And then David the Melech was distracted. What did Malachim Ovis do? A little bit here, it's a bit more complicated. Adeochi, meanwhile, Malachim Ovis didn't do anything. Noshav Zika, wind came, I mean, because Roch arranged it, kind of, yeah. Wind started blowing. The Avish Beine Kani, and it started making an Ivsha, like a noise, like the, the whisper of the wind, I was called in English, uh, the wind's whisper, the wind's noise, yeah? Howling of the wind, very good. Beinikani, between the canes, between the reeds. Oh, now Raba, Raba, as opposed to Dovid the Melech, was still not, he didn't stop, stop to learn because it was an interesting noise, yeah? I'm sure Dovid was also higher. Sova gunda de Ah, he thought it's a platoon, it's a group of soldiers. He thought this is a unit, a legion, whatever, of soldiers coming after me. He was in hiding. Yeah, it wasn't stamp paranoid. He, he thought that they came they came here. He heard like the t -t -t -t, you know, like the wind going through the cane. Sounds a bit, you know, like the, the, the noise of the you know of the horses, yeah. A little bit. So, you know, people in the Holocaust, you know, every second they thought, you know, the Nazis after them in hiding, you know, even if the noise was stammy noise, because that was the mindset. So he was so scared, he actually made a decision. He made a decision, a conscious decision. Omar, he said. I prefer that that man dies, meaning himself. I prefer to die naturally and go have fun with the Shemaim. And I don't want to be given to the hands of the Malchus. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to die by the king and his soldiers who are after me. I prefer to die naturally. He, and that's how he went upstairs. Oh, so that shows you, by the way, now nobody was there, but still the Moroim knew, maybe Baruch HaKodesh, they knew that he died because of the government. In other words, although he was in hiding, if you were there, you thought his time died. But internally, we know that really he died because he made a decision. I prefer to die. One second. Uh, I saw you. He prefers dying naturally rather than dying in the hands of the soldiers. Yeah, similar to Shaul. Although Shaul uh, sort of committed suicide. Yeah, some people prefer to die naturally or even, I'm not saying, and not to die in the hands of the enemies. Give me a minute. Well, he died. As he was dying, it says between life and death. Now, the question came to him in Shemaim. He knew that there is a question between Akkadosh and everybody else, and he has to pass him. As he was dying, his last words were Omar, Tohar, Tohar. He said twice, Tohar, Tohar. That question about the Saras, who came before, who business? Tohar, Tohar. I'm gonna, there's a lot to say here. He says twice, Tohar. Yotza basko veomro, a basko, a heavenly voice came and said, veomro, ashrecha rabba banachmeni, she goof chator, good for you are good, how good it is for you, ashrecha, she goof chator, the yotza nishmoscho betoho. Ah, in other words, your body is pure and your neshama left you while saying the word tahor. What a beautiful word to say as one leaves the world. Uh, there's a lot of commentary here, but before my commentary, I'm going to listen to your questions, of course. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bring it in. Uh, Baruch was first. Yes. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad I'm answering your questions before they even come. What I wanted to, very nice comments. Thank you all. What I wanted to add is as follows. You open the Rambam. Rambam is Aloha Sefer. <laughs> Shulchan Aruch doesn't talk about Negoim. They don't apply nowadays. There's no, there's no uh, Negoim in Shulchan Aruch. Negoim, Tzara'as, times of Mashiach, yeah, times of Beis Mikdash. Open the Rambam who deals with it. You know the Rambam tells you? The Rambam tells you that in case of Sofek, you know it's Aloha Tome. Rambam, excuse me. What about this beautiful story? What are you talking about? We just saw the Rabbah said Tor, left with Tor, decided... HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Rabbi say Tahor. Rambam, are you arguing on that? Excuse me. Ask everybody and everyone gets very angry with the Rambam. Mm -hmm. There are a few answers. There are a few answers. The, not that I decide what's the best one, but the, the I think it's the Kesef Mishnah, if I'm not mistaken. Who is the Shulchan Aruch, by the way? I'm almost sure it's Kesef Mishnah who says it. I saw it yesterday night. It says the Kesef Mishnah. Really, this Mechloikas, by the way, also appears in a very regular, mundane, normal way between Tanoim. There's Chachomim against Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says that it is Tohor. Other Chachomim say Tome. 
So in the regular course of things, Rabbi Akiva against a few Tanoim, Allah is not like Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva against one person, Allah is like Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva against many, the Rabbi Akiva loses the game. That's normally the rule in uh, Ervin Memvov, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so Badini Odom, really, Badini Yeshiva Shalmata, in this normal world, in this uh, physical world, Allah should be what? Tome. Now, Kadesh Borchu was trying to get Koyach from another human being, Rabbah, to decide like him, right? Okay, to, 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 to yes say Tohor, right? Now, however, when Rabbah said the word Tohor, he wasn't completely alive. When Rabbah was, was saying Tohor, he was half dead, half alive. So we missed the chance. Because why? Because at that point, it's not completely cold, yeah, being down here physical. Rabbah was already all up there. So Lamai said, again, you fail, and again, it's Bloi B'Shamayim He. Again, it's a heavenly decision, because Rabbah was already halfway upstairs. Precisely because of that, we don't pass him like Rabbah, but we pass him like, what, like the other ones were against Rabbi Kiva, and like the Shiva Shalmala, that said that it's Tome. Because we missed that exact point of, of passing down here, he wasn't really down here. Rabbah wasn't down here enough to say regular, and therefore we revert back to regular mundane, regular Mishnah in the Goim, Perik, uh, base or something, I don't remember where, the Goim, that says, no, that's the Mechalek, because we're given Chachomim. Another Pshat, another Pshat. Why did it we repeat the word Tohor twice? Is it just nice poetry? Tohor, Tohor, maybe. No, there's more to it. Why did they say Tohor? They say, let's say you think one way, but the boss thinks the other way. <laughs> and he's really, he, you don't want to lose your job, yeah? So, you tell the boss, and the boss says, uh, Tor, and you say, Tor, Tor. You say so? Okay. Sometimes you repeat twice to say, oh, if that's what you say, then fine. Even in today's language, right? I'm telling you, this is good. Ah, good, good. You say so? Okay. Ah, which means Rabbi didn't really believe that. Rabbi really thought Allah is Tome. Would Rabbi argue with Hashem? He's the boss. Rabbi didn't want to argue with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And he says, if you say so, Kaddish Baruch Hu, I'll go along with you. you. You are God, you know. And therefore, even Rabbi himself didn't really, really mean it. Right? And therefore, I don't remember, one of the Mephoshim says that. And therefore, halacha at the end of the day is Tome. That's the other pshat. Uh, fine, Baruch Hashem. Okay, let's continue for now. What happened next? What happened next? Now, imagine a situation. Rabbi is dead. His body, with all the Ruchnias, his body is now where? In the meadow, in the field, out of town. In the it's, a, it's not a swamp like you think in, in, in Florida. It's like a marshy area. Agam is like an area where the animals graze. Yeah. The kids are, it's not a respectable, nobody buries him. They're all in town. They're all in Pupadisa learning their Torah. Other people are not, nobody knows what's going on. They think he's still in hiding. Nothal Pitka Melikia. Now, a, a, a heavenly not voice this time. A note, a petik, a letter. Yeah, a letter came down Mishamayim, the Pumpedisa. All of a sudden, in the Pumpedisa Yeshiva, boom, you know, a letter from a Kurdish Borhu, yeah, quicker than Israeli mail, that's for sure, came down from Shamayim. Rabbi Bar Nachmeni Nisbakish Mishiva Shalmala. Whoa. Rabbi Bar Nachmeni was asked to come to Yeshiva Shalmala, not Chas Shalom, the academy, to the Yeshiva of upstairs. Nosku Abai Verove, they all went out. The Kula Rabbonon, they all went out. Abai Verova were his Talmidim. They were closest to him. They were his Mamish, uh, very, very close to him. The Kula Rabbonon, all the Rabbonim from Pumpedisa, the Yasuki Bay, they all went out to bury him. But where is he? Lohavo Yadi they didn't know his place. He didn't tell them, you know, the ways kind of didn't work and they didn't know, who, you know, where, where is he? As Lula Agma, they went to the Agam. They started searching where he would probably be in the Agam. They saw a whole group of birds. They were like staying in one place, flying, but floating, soaring in one place and flapping their wings in one place in order to, to protect him from the sun. Because the body of a tzaddik does not decay from worms, but the sun can affect it. Interestingly enough, just like with David the Melech, same question. Shlomo Melech had a question. My father is Mukta now because he's dead. What do I do with him? Whole story. So now they saw a whole bunch of birds flapping. That was kind of weird. You, usually birds fly. They don't stay in one place for a long time. A whole bunch of them going like that, protecting somehow. They figured, Amri, they figured, oh, look over there. Shmamino must be. Awesome who? 
must be is over there, and they found him that way. Because Baruch made it miyuchad for him, protection for the tzaddik. Now safdut losa yoyim but losa lelvosa. They were maspid him. They actually eulogized him. They buried him. They eulogized him. They made a spade him three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. And then they wanted to go home. After three days, instead of seven days, they wanted to go home. Nafal Pitka came another note from Shamaim. Whoever stops at this point, whoever goes home after three days, instead of seven days, Hashem will be menadehim. Hashem will excommunicate him. Shamaim. What's the punishment for somebody... What's the punishment of somebody who's disrespectful to Amit Chochem? Nidui. Excommunication. That's what's going to happen to you. Safdu Shiva Yoimi. They mourned him for seven days. Nafal Pitka. At the end of the seven days came another note from Shamaim. Lechu Lebeischem L'Sholem. Go to your house in peace. Question is, the Marsha, why only three days? What did they think? Every Chiloni knows that Shiva is seven days. Answers, I think it's a Marsha. I, I don't know who says what. I think it's a says, you know, I actually read, yeah, in the Levias of the of the people who resisted the KGB, nobody was allowed to give a husband. Because if you support the guy who died, who opposed the KGB, the KGB will help you, take you to Siberia. In other words, it's dangerous to be mishtatif in the Levaya of a person who's anti-government. And that was the story over here. The mysterious nefesh, for three days, they stayed there. But eventually the governor is going to knock on the door of the yeshiva since the entire yeshiva is empty. Where is all the boys in the Jewish yeshiva? Oh, they went there. Oh, they're making a leviathan for that uh, rebel? Oh, they're going to catch them, chop them, take them to Siberia, to the Persian Siberia, yeah? And in Mela, they only said three days. Another shot is, that's what says three days and three nights. They wanted to create Kilu, an effect of almost seven days by the day of the Kvura, plus three days and three nights at seven, six, Kilu, day and night, yeah? But the Maise, after Kodesh Baruch Hu told them, don't leave, they listened to Kodesh Baruch Hu, they risked their own lives, and they actually stayed there by the burial place, and they were masked him for entire seven days. That day in which Rabbah was Nifter, Daniel Zappa, there was a very, very strong Zaf, very strong wind. There was Mamish in an avalanche, a very, very strong hurricane, whatever, very strong wind. Yeah, look like in America, you have that, right? You know, houses, this. Listen to what happened. The wind swept away, the wind kilo or caused to move. The, the wind actually blew away a Taya, which is an Arab merchant, Kirachiv Gamla, who was riding on his camel. There was an Arab riding on his camel, Mehai Gisa Denhal Papa, the Shadia Behach Gisa. In other words, he was riding on the one bank of the river Papa, and the wind blew him and make them fly all the way to the other side of the river. The wind was so strong, the hurricane, or whatever you call it, yeah, it happens in America, right? People can fly from the sea, right? No? Yeah. Yeah, so that was so strong that that guy with an entire camel flew and ended up, whoopa, yeah, the other side, amusement park, to the other side of the of the river. Omar, my high, yeah, the, he asked people what's going on. Even he, the Arab, realized that the Shimon Mishamayim, why, why is this happening, such strong wind? All of a sudden, yeah, what's the name of this, uh, the hurricane? Amri Lay, they told him, Nach Nafshe de Rabbi Barnachmeni. Because Rabbi Barnachmeni died, that's why there's such a turmoil, such wind in the world. And again, some of Hashim say, because they had a Havamina to be masked him only three days and not seven, that alone was, was Midas Adin. Yeah, Hashem was angry and made that very strong wind to show I'm unhappy that people even thought, and they had a good reason, people had a thought of being masked at tzaddik, not enough, not given the proper honor, that alone was not in line with what the Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted, so he brought that strong wind, at Kedekach. Omar Lefonim, this is hard to understand, because listen to the prayer of this Taya. Taya always means an Arab merchant. The embassy also means the Yetzir Haram, by the way. Omar Lefonim, the Arab thing, man told Hashem, the Boi Shaloilam, he wanted to stop the wind. The entire world is yours. The Rabbi Barnachmeni Didach. Rabbi Barnachmeni is also yours. Now listen to this. At the Rabbi, you are Rabbi. Ata Oyhev Oishel Rabbi. Guys, listen. You are Rabbi's Oyhev. You are Rabbi's best friend. The Rabbi Didach and Rabbi is your best friend. Rabbi and the Kodesh Baruch Hu are buddy buddies. I wouldn't have said that myself. Don't look at me like that. It's the Gemara and Rashi. 
Rabbah and Akush Baruch Hu are like that, tight, are like good friends. And now, Alma, why are you destroying the world? Macharusa said the true thing. What do you want now? Rabbah is next to you. What else do you want? It's your ideal situation, Akush Baruch Hu. Your best friend is right next to you, Yeshiva Shalmala. And because of that prayer, Nach Zafa, Hashem listened to that tefillah, and Hashem really, yeah, made the wind stop, the wind abated, yeah, no wind anymore, no strong, angry avalanche because of the dubbing of that. Very strange that an Arab guy would get to that level. I don't know what the secrets are over here. There is much more depth over here. I'm sure maybe I should look in Ben Yoda inside. Maybe it wasn't quoted. Le- yeah, yeah is. Ben Yoda is definitely a source. Thank you for the reminder. Lemaise, the Taya many many times means the Yitzhar Hara. Maybe it means that once Rabbah died, the Yitzhar Hara was moved from one place to another. Maybe the Yitzhar Hara is telling Hashem, I'm giving up. Rabbah is next to you. I don't know. Lemaise, yeah, give me one more line and then I'll listen to your question. Rabbi Shima ben Chalafta, one more, a, one more topic, one more short story to do with, with the Meiroim and Tanoim that were big, not only in spirits, but they had big bodies, they were fat, excuse the language. Rabbi Shima ben Chalafta, Baal Boso Hava. It was a Baal Boso, he had a lot of flesh. Yom Echad, Hava Chamimale. One time it was hot. People with, you know, high, you know, with uh, more weight usually tend to get hotter, yeah. It was very hot. He went and he set up a shina de tua, but the rock of the mountain, on top of the mountain where it's more breezy, but it wasn't breezy enough. Omer Lelebate, he asked his daughter, Anithi alai be menifa. What's menifa in Hebrew? A fan. You know, right. Anithi alai be menifa. Fan, fan me. Yeah, you know, do like that with a fan. Ventilate me with a fan. Yeah. I'll give you in return. He calling the nerd, you know, nerd is one is one of the samimoni, one of the good smelling aromatic herbs of the Torah. I'll give you a whole like, like a bouquet, a bouquet of nerd. In other words, you go like that, you know, give me some good air, fan the air for me. In return, my dear daughter, I'll give you a nice bouquet. What a deal! So she was about to do that, and then things changed. Adachi. Meanwhile, divide. Meanwhile, Nosh Vazika, the wind started blowing. Agashbuch who brought the wind, so her service was not necessary anymore. Omar said, said the Heilig Heilig Yatana said of Shimon ben Chalafta, Kama ki koin the nerd lemari dichi. How many bouquets of nerd do we have to give a Kodushbuch, the master of the wind and all everything else? In other words, don't take Hashem's mercy for granted. How much would we pay to have a healthy eye? Millions. Let's say a person knows that tomorrow Chas Vashon would be blind. But there's a top doctor in uh, Boston, no, yeah, in uh, Brussels, wherever, that can heal his eyes. Millions, for sure. He would collect, he would borrow, mortgage his house, sell himself for a slave. So you are a billionaire for having two healthy eyes. Say thank you to Hashem. You owe Hashem billions and billions for all the toivas, all the good things and favors he does to us every single second. And this is Ashkofa we should have. You pay your daughter to go like that. Pekulish Baruch for having the wind, for breathing, for everything. We we have, we own trillions of money with each and every healthy organ. Your question is welcome now. Yeah. Baruch said something very nice. Why did we leave it to the Arab uh, Taya to be the one davening to Hashem to stop the wind? So he said maybe the Rabonim, the other the Amiroim realized they deserve to have such a weather. They realized maybe they're not masked enough. They said Hashem brought the wind. We'll accept it. Yisurim. The Arab is the one who tried to change it. Okay, very nice. No, because I said, because he died and there was a thought by them not to be maspidim enough, so Hashem said it's going to be very windy to show that Hashem is a bit upset. Za'afa doesn't just mean a, a wind. Za'af means anger. Zo'eth in Hebrew means angry. Upset. Visibly upset. Yeah, there was anger in Shemaim. But yeah. Okay. Oh, now we have one, one, um, we have two paragraphs that are not a gadita, and then back to a gadita, the, the, the next uh, page. Hakol keminag ha medina. Oh, let's just remind ourselves what did the Mishnah speak about? And the Mishnah spoke about workers' rights and the, the conditions, the agreement between the employer, employee, employer, employee, conditions, agreements. Hakol keminag ha medina. So we said that if a, if a person hires workers, he has to make sure that 
not that he has to make sure things. Unless known otherwise, yeah, unless they have a clear agreement, everything should be done like Mina Gamedina. What's Mina Gamedina? What's accepted in the rest of the city, the rest of the region, whatever other other workers do, that's going to be the agreement between my boss and myself, what other bosses and other employers do. What do you mean everything should be go like Mina Gamedina? What are you coming to add? The extra word, everything should follow the local Mina. What's he coming to say? Latuye Beatra to come and add in the following case. Let's say there's a place where the workers normally have their mikrach rifta, a sandwich, and they drink anafka, which is a mashke of a revis of a mashke, and that's what they do, that's what they drink. Now, the question is let's say balabais, we said in Mishnah, supposed to provide them with that. Sometimes Balabais would provide the food, sometimes they would. Okay, what's Hakol Kaminiga Medina? Let's say the issue is not who will provide. The question is the time of lunch or the time of breakfast and the expense of who. Yeah? In other words, continues the Gemara. Let's say there are two explanations here. Explanation number one. The Balabais says, you want me to provide you with sandwiches and with a drink? Okay, okay, because that's what everyone else does. Okay, eh, you know what? An expense of my time? Uh oh, yeah, by me, people work all day long. My name is Paroy. No, no, no. I want you to come 20 minutes earlier to work and then you eat. Yeah, okay, and then you have back to back work all the time without eating. Yeah, in other words, the expense, the time of the meal should be on your expense and not on my expense. That's what he wants to say. No, they would say, no, 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 that's not what, the, you cannot do that. You have no permission to do that. If the accepted minig is to what? Because we said they're only supposed to leave home when? By Nate's Achama, not before, according to Rashi, right? They're supposed to leave at Nate's, arrive by him a bit after Nate's, and then stay till the night. And we're not supposed to leave home like crazy, crazy early before Nate's by Alois in order to be by you for breakfast before work and then start work. No. Because our working time is set by halacha from Nate till says, right? And during that time, we have, I don't know how long, 15, 20 minutes for a meal, which if is normal, if it's normal to provide, you provide. If it's not normal, we'll provide. Yeah, but yeah, but the time is on your expense. Another pshat is, and we'll finish with that for today, another pshat is of Toysvis is let's say it's normal by them to have breakfast in his house. And then they go to the field, which is usually near his house. Yeah, and he says to them, you know what? Today, my breakfast is not ready. I'm, my wife or me are making you breakfast, but it's taking too long. It's on the expense of, of work time. Go start your work in the field, and eventually my wife or I will come to you with, you know, nice pancakes, with some breakfast, with some Kellogg cereal, but start working without breakfast, and I'll bring you breakfast later, brunch. They can say, no, you have no permission to do that. If the accepted thing is what? To eat before, and people need koyach, they need food in order to work. No, we'll wait. We'll wait until breakfast is ready, and then we'll start working. Okay, thank you very much. It's Loch Rabba. May you have a good morning and a good breakfast, unless you had your breakfast already. Thank you very much for everybody here, everybody in Torani time, everybody in the YouTube channel. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Hashem bless you. See you tomorrow. One more page of stories about Avram Avinu. Tomorrow we're going to see, tomorrow and the day after will be a about the life of Avram Avinu and so may not. Thank you very, very much.